Experiment number two is the Reynolds apparatus in pipe friction. The apparatus that we're going to use for this experiment, for both parts of the experiment, is what you see in front of you right now. In the far off distance, we have the supply tank, which is going to supply a constant stream of water through the tube, extending from the tank all the way to the discharge line that you see here on the left with the blue pipes. For part A, we're going to inject some dye into the water as it flows through the tube. And we're going to observe the velocity front in both lambda and turbulent conditions. And in order to measure the velocity through the tube, since we know its diameter, we're going to use this manometer setup, this incline manometer, which is going to measure the pressure at two different locations along the pipe. Let me readjust the camera, and before I start allowing water to flow through the tube, I will just show you the supply tank. Looking at the apparatus from the back side, we could see our supply tank. So the supply tank gets filled from the building supply with the green hose shown here, and the dye reservoir is this blue funnel on the back here. So we're going to fill that funnel full of dye and we're going to inject it into the stream as the water is flowing through. So you'll notice the tank has two components, the fill side and the discharge side. There's a baffle plate separating the two to reduce the turbulence between them. There's a thermometer so we can measure the temperature. The tank will then fill on the right hand side and subsequently uh, fill the left side at the same time and then there's a weir at the top to ensure that we have a constant pressure head. So once the water flows over that weir then we know that we have a constant pressure head supplying our tube. Let's take a look at the front of the apparatus now. A closer look at the front side of the apparatus, we can see the overflow weir, so ensuring our constant pressure head, and most importantly, we have our bell mouth at the inlet of our tube. So as the water flows through that bell mouth, we get nice developed flow through the tube, and we'll be able to observe the velocity front as it progresses down the tube. So I've turned the water line on and we can see the supply tank filling up. I have the outlet in the closed position so no water will actually flow through the discharge tube. Looking at the discharge side of the apparatus, right now all the valves are closed. So even though that there's water in the tank, the supply line is not on. So when we run the experiment, I'm going to open this valve here. That's going to allow the water to flow through the tube, up through this T, around these elbows, and then discharge directly into the drain. If I want to measure the actual flow rate, then what I'm going to do is close the, close the black globe valve, and we have our two rotometers. So the low flow rotometer is the one on the left. The high flow rotometer is the one on the right. If I want to have a low flow rate, then I'll open this valve here, which will allow the water to flow through this T and up through the bottom of the, of, of the meter. And as the water flows around the float, the more water that flows, the higher the float will float and then we just directly read off the scale how much flow rate we have. If I want to use the other rotometer, then make sure this valve is closed and open this valve here, and that will allow the water again to flow up through this T, through the bottom of the meter, and again, the more water that flows around the float, the higher the float will come to steady state. And then we just read off directly off the scale how much flow we have. And then if I want to discharge all of the line completely without going through any of the meters, I can just open this globe valve down here and the water will flow directly into the drain.
I have a very low flow rate of water going through the instrument at this point in time. In order to read this instrument, the line that we're looking for on this float is this line right here. So you can see that right now we have 0 0.03 liters per second for our flow rate. So if I want to adjust the flow rate, all I have to do is adjust that valve, which I indicated earlier, and we can get any flow rate here. This is a close-up of the low flow rate rotometer, and you can see that the units are slightly different. This one is liters per minute, as opposed to the other one, which is liters per second. And the location that we're looking for to read this meter is right here. So this, you would read off the scale, would be 0 0.6 liters per minute. At a very, very slow flow rate, I'm going to just gradually introduce a nice stream of dye into the flow. And then pulse the dye. As it, and you can see the front. So this is right after the bell mouth. The flow is not fully developed yet, but the advantage of having a horizontal Reynolds apparatus is that the student can very easily walk along the length of the tube and observe the velocity profile as it proceeds down the tube. Okay, now I'm gonna increase the flow rate. with a much higher flow rate. Let's send a few pulses through. You can see it dissipates very quickly. Perhaps a little too fast. Hold on one second. So now we should have fully developed turbulent flow. Let's send a few pulses through. We can see how quickly that dye dissipates. Okay, let's take a look at all of this downstream. Under lambda flow conditions, this is looking at the end of the tube. I'm going to send a few short pulses of dye through the water and hopefully we'll see a velocity profile. That was really good. Really. Okay, so here what I'm trying to do is see if we can have a continuous streak of the dye.
Again, with no flow going through the tube, I'm just showing you a bird's eye view of the incline manometer. Right now we can see that the two water levels are not balanced. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to balance these before we start because the pressure in the tube at the two different locations should be exactly the same at this point in time. So just give me a minute, let me balance the lines and we should be ready to start this experiment. So here we are with zero flow rate and I've got the manometer still at an incline of 45 degrees. And as you can see from the lines, I have the manometer pretty well balanced. So I'm going to create a constant pressure head at the supply, allow some water to flow through the tubes and you'll be able to read the differential pressure gradient across the length of the pipe at the two taps where the uh, manometer is attached to the tube. Here's our second flow rate. We have fully developed turbulent flow at this setting. And you can see we have a, lot, a much larger pressure differential on the manometer. If I want to increase the sensitivity of the manometer, all I would have to do is incline it closer to the horizontal. So right now it's set for 45 degrees. I'm going to do the exact same flow rates, only have the manometer inclined to 15 degrees. What I'm going to do is slowly close the valve and we should see that our manometer goes back to be balanced again. So now there's no flow through the tube and we can see that our manometer has balanced. At no flow rate with the manometer set at 15 degrees, here we can see that the manometer is balanced and I'm going to zoom out because the sensitivity is very high. We're going to get a very large deflection with the pressure gradient that I'm going to induce. So the same two flow rates. I'll do the slow one first and then the high flow rate. After taking a series of measurements, when you're done, I'm going to shut the flow rate off and our manometer should come back and balance again. Excellent. At zero flow, we get our balance millimeter again.